Okay, so let's take a deeper dive into apple cider vinegar. What is it anyway? Well, first of all, fermentation can be achieved with various helpful microscopic organisms. Most people are probably aware that wine is fermented by yeasts. And most people are unaware that wine that goes bad and turns into vinegar, this has happened because bacteria are actually responsible for turning things into vinegar. Bacterial fermentation in general is how vinegars are made. Now, one of the most important vinegar components is acetic acid. Now, I've written and talked about acetic acid a lot. Acetic acid, or acetate, is a short-chain fatty acid. And these short-chain fatty acids are incredibly important for our well-being, for our mitochondrial well-being, for our brain well-being. And one of the things we've learned that you probably learned in Unlocking the Keto Code or my new book, Gut Check, is the best, the most important short-chain fatty acid is another compound called butyrate or butyric acid. Butyrate is really the holy grail of short-chain fatty acids. The problem is we, number one, need butyrate producing bacteria in our gut. And most of us, because of antibiotics that we've personally taken or the antibiotics in our animals that we eat or the milk that we drink, the good butyrate producing bacteria are few and far between. Now we've known for many, many years that butyrate producing bacteria have to have soluble fiber to make butyrate. And that sounds all well and good until recently the Sonnenberg husband and wife team at Stanford published a study using healthy volunteers where one group got a large amount of soluble fiber and they looked at their gut microbiome diversity, how many different species were present. And quite frankly, the more diverse your microbiome, the better. And they looked at markers of inflammation. And despite eating all this wonderful soluble fiber, they didn't change their gut diversity and they didn't lower their inflammation. Huh? How come? That's how you make it, right? Well, not so fast. They then took volunteers, gave them the same fiber, but this time they added fermented foods, primarily in the form of yogurts and kefirs. In other words, they had short-chain fatty acids. It was only after the addition of these precursing short-chain fatty acids, like acetic acid, like propionic acid, that then their gut microbiome diversity increased and their inflammation markers decreased. So it's, it's a one-two punch. And one of the effects of apple cider vinegar or other vinegars is to have the precursors for making butyrate that you can make then with supplementation with fiber. So vinegar, as a short-chain fatty acid, is also a great mitochondrial uncoupler. All right, so let's talk about what might happen if you took a shot of apple cider vinegar every day for 30 days. Well, it actually might help you eat less. The acetic acid can actually affect hunger hormones, GLP-1 agonists, to help you feel satiated. Plus, if you take vinegar with a meal, vinegar is acid, and your stomach actually doesn't empty out the contents of your stomach into your intestines, until all the acid in your stomach is used up in the process of digesting proteins. And so one of the interesting theories is that that extra shot of acid in the form of a vinegar delays gastric emptying and slows the absorption of food. By the way, 
These weight loss drugs, the GLP-1 agonists like Ozempic or Rigobi, work in part by delaying gastric emptying. So why not just have a shot of balsamic vinegar with your meal? Better yet, there are many cultures that eat their salad at the end of the meal or at the beginning of the meal to get the vinegar into place in the stomach to have this action. Fairly clever how salads became a starter or a finisher of meals, probably to get the vinegar. Now, because short-chain fatty acids, like acetic acid, are so important for gut health, most of us are convinced that the next benefit of apple cider vinegar is, in fact, the improved biodiversity of the gut microbiome. If you look at any of my episodes with Pendulum Life, makers of multiple gut friendly probiotics, you'll see how important butyrate producing organisms are for gut health. Finally, you're probably going to notice glowing skin. Most of us should realize that the lining of our gut is merely our skin turned inside out. And what we see happening on the lining of our gut is reflected on the outside in our skin. And that's why I judge somebody's gut health simplistically by looking at their skin health. So if you want healthy glowing skin, apple cider vinegar is a great way to improve your skin health by improving your gut wall health. Now, is there a better vinegar to take a shot of than apple cider vinegar? Well, I'm a big fan of balsamic vinegar. Why? Balsamic vinegar has the highest amount of bioavailable resveratrol, that miracle red wine compound that also uncouples mitochondria, that you can get, more so than even taking a capsule of resveratrol. So that's a really great way to get that polyphenol into your diet. However, let's not forget that if you buy apple cider vinegar, you should buy it with the mother. Now, what the heck is the mother? The mother is kind of all the leftover dead bodies of these bacteria that sink to the bottom. And rather than just being dead bodies of bacteria, as you know from Gut Check, one of my chapters is Dead men tell no tales, but dead bacteria do. And it turns out these dead bacteria carry information. They are postbiotics that carry very important information to tell your other gut buddies in your gut that some really good guys are in the house and to party like it's 1999. So get the mother if you're going to get apple cider vinegar, and make sure you use it. Don't just filter it off. Now, can you overdo apple cider vinegar? Well, it's an acid. So some people do get irritation of their gums and teeth. What do you do about that? Well, dilute it or mix it in a dressing. That way you'll get all the benefits. You'll get the same dose, but it'll also, in general, give you lots of wonderful soluble fiber in the forms of the leaves that you're eating. So it's a one-two punch. I had the pleasure of knowing Mrs. Bragg for many years. I'm a big fan of her products, even though she's now deceased. But there are many other high-quality apple cider vinegar products. Please buy organic apple cider vinegar please buy the mother and use it. Now, I talked about balsamic vinegar as a great way to get polyphenols. Now, why not apple cider vinegar? Well, apple cider vinegar does have some useful polyphenols, and there are some really cool polyphenols, particularly in the peel of apples. And one of the reasons I want you to get organic is most of our apples in this country are laden with pesticides and herbicides. And in fact, the Environmental Working Group just put apples 
onto the dirty dozen list of worst contaminated fruits that you can eat. So please, if you're going to get apple cider vinegar, make sure you get the organic variety. Now, I think there's far more powerful polyphenol-containing compound, and that's olive oil. And if you really want to use apple cider vinegar as your shot of getting polyphenols, do me a favor. Mix your apple cider vinegar with olive oil and take a shot of that. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dr. Gundry podcast. Make sure to check out the next one here. If it really bothers you, the tartness, what I like to do is I like to use allulose, which is a true sugar that has no calories, but it is a prebiotic in itself. 